Dr. Sherry Thomas is here to talk about a little gynecology 101, which you should and should not expect from your appointment. Dr. Sherry, you guys are a little scary. You know that, right? <laughs> Just going to a gynecologist is always going to be scary. We love you, but you are a little scary. Well, we're, we try to make it a little less scary. <laughs> but listen, really, why should women go to a gynecologist? Well, of, of course, when you become sexually active, you want to start seeing a gynecologist. Mm -hmm. And if you're under 21, your daughter will tell you, Mom, I'm tired of seeing the pediatrician. I'm ready to see a gynecologist. Now, what, what, I start out by saying it's scary. What should I expect, especially in my first visit to a gynecologist, what should I expect? Well, you should expect to have your doctor talk to you about your history, your family history, uh, and all the other things that your primary care doctor, if you aren't seeing them yet, will talk to you about your vaccinations, your um, health history, are you mm -hmm. exercising, are you eating well, do you smoke? They'll talk to you about that. And then they'll ask you if you have any concerns, any reason you specifically came to see them. Have you been recently sexually active and maybe you were worried you might have a sexually transmitted disease? So I have a 17-year-old and a 15-year-old, and I don't believe they're sexually active, but when should I introduce them to the gy a gynecologist, have them have a pelvic exam or a pap smear? That's a great question for most parents of children, women that you wonder, when are my little girls going to start being sexually active? I'm sure you've talked a little bit of, to them about sexual activity. I have. And um, they'll see a pediatrician every year up until they're about 18. But there's a transition between the pediatrician and a gynecologist where you can ask your daughters, gee, would you be interested in seeing a gynecologist? That means there's more that they want to talk about with a gynecologist. And that's a great start. But you know, Dr. Thomas, there's an illusion that the gynecologist is only for when you're sexually active, but we both know that cervical cancer and other things can come out of a pap smear and out of a, a pelvic exam, right? So how, they don't know about that, so how do I talk to them about that? Well, cervical cancer and abnormal pap smears are later in life. Okay. Most women aren't going to have a pap smear before 21. Okay. Um, so that you won't need to worry about. If a young girl is having gynecologic issues, a vaginal discharge or okay. something her pediatrician can't help, then they will refer you to a gynecologist. But most girls between the ages of about 16 to 21 become sexually active. And that's when they should think about seeing a gynecologist or if, if their primary mm -hmm. health care provider does pediatrics and also sees adult women, that's a great transition they don't even have to make. So when I'm at the gynecologist, is there anything that I shouldn't share with you? When I come in to see you, doctor, is there anything I shouldn't share with you? Oh, you should find <laughs> a gynecologist you can share everything with. Okay. Because it's so important that you are able to tell that doctor everything. Mm -hmm. That's how we help you if you are having an extramarital affair, uh, if you wow. had an unwanted sexual experience. We need to know so that we can help you right away. Now, is there a certain age that I don't have to see you anymore? That I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> no more plastic clamps. Is there a yeah. certain age? It's not after that first exam, <laughs> as you would like it to be. <laughs> Darn. <laughs> so there is a point when if a woman's had a hysterectomy mm -hmm. that she doesn't need a pap smear, um, but at 65, if she stops having, has, has had pap smears that uh -huh. are all normal, she can stop having pap smears. But a pelvic exam is very important. We detect things like rectal cancers okay. and other pelvic masses. So I recommend you have a pelvic exam every couple of years the rest of your life, whether you have a pap smear or not. And how do I look for a gynecologist? Since I give you, I'm giving you my heart, how do I look for it? Oh, that's a great, great question. Well, I, when you move into an area, I'd ask your girlfriends, who do you see? Okay. Then I'd look online, check the doctor's credentials. There's so many different evaluations of physicians where you can see if people like a particular doctor or not. And it also tells you where we went to school okay. and um, if we actually practice in that area. For example, as a gynecologist, some of us are just general OBGYNs, mm -hmm. but say you need an infertility problem, it'll give you that doctor's credentials, wow. or an oncologist for a cancer, or for pelvic surgery, incontinence <laughs> or prolapse, that's what I do. And you can see our credentials, see what we treat. And so in through. essence, my gynecology, gynecologist is actually my good friend, right? Absolutely. <laughs>
Dr. Thomas, thank you so much for joining us. In order to take care of others, you have to take care of yourself. Stay tuned to Everyway Woman.